طيب here we are discussing segment 2 of lecture 17 of course in segment 1 we have developed the 5 step algorithm to design a reactor now in this segment we're going to talk about batch reactors for labs and plants and we're going to apply the 5 step algorithm to the design of a batch reactor one of the jobs in which chemical engineers are involved in is the scale up of laboratory experiments to pilot plants operation demonstration scale or to full scale production of course whenever a uh, new technology is developed first it is developed in the lab and then converted to pilot plant and then demonstration skill and finally to the full scale meaning full scale production meaning the plant the actual plant so it always almost always starts in a lab in this section we discuss more about the use of batch reactors in laboratories and plants and conduct calculations for cases where x is the preferred variable remember we are in part one of chapter four and in part one and chapter of chapter four we are interested in utilizing design equations written in terms of conversion in part two of this chapter we show how to analyze a laboratory scale batch reactor to obtain kinetic data and conduct calculations for cases where concentration is the preferred variable okay so let's talk about batch operation batch reactors are usually analyzed with a constant volume assumption and you know why because it's we're either using it for liquid phase reaction where you have negligible density change or we use it for gas phase reaction but the reaction is carried out in a constant volume sealed reactor now use the explained CRE chemical reaction engineering design algorithm the five step algorithm to formulate an equation that enables you to calculate the time necessary to achieve a given conversion X for the irreversible liquid phase second order reaction A goes to be carried out isothermally So let's do this together. Remember, the reactor was a batch reactor operated isothermally, and the reaction was a reversible reaction, liquid phase, second order reaction A goes to B. Okay, so we want to design the CRE problem, meaning that we need to find the time because it's a batch reactor. So when we design a batch reactor, we're interested in finding the time, the required time to achieve a given conversion. Of course, the first step was the mole balance. So we select the correct mole balance. And this is the mole balance for a batch reactor in A0 times dx over dt equals minus Ra times V. Then we go to the second step, which is the rate load. See Shabab here? Again, this is the most important equation in the design algorithm because this is, this is the equation which it will enable us to find the required time to achieve a given conversion. However, when we wrote this equation, we actually introduced a variable, a rate of reaction. You know that the rate of reaction changes with time. It's a variable, so we need to provide an equation for and this equation is known as the rate law so here we go the rate law is written as minus ra equals k times ca to the power 2 since we have a second order reaction okay now that we provided this equation we can see that we have introduced another variable which is ca c is also a variable so that means we need to provide an equation for ca so we go to the stoichiometry and we find an equation for ca CA equals 
Na over V. Na equals Na naught times 1 minus X and V equals V naught. Sorry, I forgot to put the naught here. And therefore, we can write the equation as Ca equals Ca naught times 1 minus X. Then comes the combined step. And the combined step, we're going to combine all of the equations above into one equation so we're going to substitute for ca using this equation so for minus ra we will have k there we go k times ca squared this is ca so there we go ca naught one minus x and it is squared and then of course v equals v naught and we have here an a naught all of this in the combined step and finally we're going to evaluate we're not going to evaluate the parameters now, but we're going to evaluate the equation. So let's rewrite this equation in such a way that we will integrate this function now. Okay, so we need to integrate. You can either integrate using your knowledge and calculus, or you can go to the appendix, appendix A1, and you can find that the integration of this function is basically x over 1 minus x. Okay, so therefore we'll have a time equals 1 over k divided by c naught times x, which is the conversion, divided by 1 minus x. And this is a good example to show you how to use the five step algorithm in, design, in designing a reactor. In this case, it's a batch reactor. Okay, so the time calculated from the batch reactor design equation is the reaction time, TR, needed to achieve a given conversion for a given reaction in a batch reactor with a given volume. It could be in the order of seconds, minutes, or hours, depending on the rate of reaction. If the reaction was fast, then probably the reaction time is going to be in the order of seconds or minutes. If it, the reaction was so slow, then it's going to be in order of hours. The total cycle time, however, or any batch operation is considerably longer than the reaction time, TR. Why is that? That's because the total time to process a batch includes the time necessary to fill the reactor. You have to put all the reactions inside, reactants inside the reactor. And also you need to heat and or pressurize the reactor to the desired condition. And then you carry out the reaction. And when you carry out the reaction, you carry it out for a time that is known as the reaction time, TR. Then of course, after you finish the reaction, you need to cool down or depressurize the reactor, remove all the products out, and then clean the reactor between the batches. So you can see that only this step is known as TR. However, if you need a total time of the process, you need to sum up all the times required for each of these steps together. In some cases, the reaction time may be only a small fraction of the total cycle time. Typical cycle times for a batch polymerization process vary from 3 to 6 hours, excluding the reaction time. The reaction time may vary between 5 and 60 hours. As mentioned earlier, the reaction time in a batch reactor could be in the order of seconds, minutes, or hours. Usually, flow reactors are used for reactions with characteristic times TR of minutes or less. However, there are cases where flow reactors are used to carry out reactions with longer TR. Example, you have heterogeneous reactions with the mass transfer limitation or of refractory reactants. So with this, we reach to the end of lecture 17, segment 2. We're going to meet again to explain the last segment of lecture 17. See you then.